Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Up Prof. Hi Martin. How are you Walter? Well Martin, uh, the closer we come to the end, the happier I become. <laughs> <laughs> well, I share that enthusiasm. <laughs> well, let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to do a discussion <clears throat> like this. We need you to enlighten our minds and help us to discern what it is that you want us to discern and also to spread the word to the people. So help us and protect us with your angels and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now Martin, once again we always start with saying that we are not politicized. Yes. That's we are observers, mm -hmm, right? Very important. And we are trying to fit world events and tendencies into the prophetic picture. And we know that the world will be forced to worship the beast and his image. Yeah. And because it is an issue of worship, there must be a shift from the secular world to the religious world. Yes. And so there must be ideological transitions. And as we discussed, or, or as we have often discussed, there are uh, these tendencies in humanity, like going from the age of reason mm -hmm. to an age where spirituality can again play a part because the age of reason hasn't satisfied the requirements of the soul. That's true. So our backdrop is quite informative, I think. We can see the movement in, in uh, do what thou wilt is the whole of mm -hmm. the law to a more uh, biblical-based ideology. That's, yeah. And the man in the center there is looking at the divide and the shift. He has a, a white cuff and a pink cuff, and I think people can make them <laughs> their own decisions as to regard the dichotomy of his thinking. Mm. Yeah, that's true. The movement towards the American flag part will definitely then be more legislative and yes. mixed not in the biblical sense. Yes. So let's have a look at what you have put together here. I think uh, this could be interesting. We start off with the solar storm. And this is News 24. Brought rarely seen aurora to South Africa. But may have caused internet cable outage. So this weekend, extreme solar storm brought a rare aurora sighting to South Africa for the first time since 1989, but also may have been the reason for an internet outage that hit South Africa and several East African countries on Sunday. What did we struggle to upload the last uh, episode? It was quite a nightmare. And I'm sure the people saw that it was late and we, it, it was just out of it our networks cell phone networks internet nothing worked yeah and we struggled for hours and hours and hours to try and upload and people probably thought what happened here but uh, it was we beyond blame. our control <laughs> we blame it on this on the solar storm we blame it now haven't i been talking in the world economic forum for a long time about such events which will take place either naturally or unnaturally. Yeah. They call it a cyber attack. Yes, it could be a, a military activity. It could be a hostile nation trying to take down networks. Martin, we are not going to take sides here, but is it possible that these are not necessarily natural phenomena, but practice runs? Well, I'm, we are labeled as conspiracy theorists. Yeah, well, then be one. Let's theorize a little <laughs> bit. 
it's just interesting that there's always they well we'll see now in the f on these uh, articles the one says it's this the one says it's this the one says it's a natural thing the other says it's man-made so well well satan is studying the laboratories of nature, nature so he, maybe his agents is hard at work yes let's have a look here's an article from my broadband warning about solar storm that could cause blackouts a severe solar storm this weekend threatens to trigger blackouts disrupt navigation and of course nasa has some interesting photos that they take and put out there for people to peruse uh, they've had lots of interesting photos in the past that turned out to be photoshop activities so Let's not be too hard on them. They're probably beautiful photographs with their most special telescopes. This is the first time since January 2005 the U.S. Space Weather Prediction Center has issued a G4 geomagnetic storm watch, the second highest on a five-step scale. As multiple waves of solar energy bear down on the planet, so the last time Earth was hit by a G5 storm, the worst on the scale was October 2003, causing power outages in Sweden, damaging transformers in South Africa. Uh, Sweden and South Africa are about as far apart as they can come, right? Yeah, the north and the south. Well, I don't think, so, well, this is tongue-in-cheek, but I don't think South Africa has um, recovered from that one yet because we still got blackouts <laughs> going on regularly <laughs> especially then. with our, our electricity system and grid but at least we've got an election coming so we haven't had any power outages for a, quite a, quite some it's time it's amazing how just before an election everything comes right for a while <laughs> <laughs> and then telcom which is the telecommunication giant in this area says network restored after massive internet outage well, they certainly disrupted our last upload. So Telcom is investigating the cause of a massive service interruption affecting the company's internet and phone call services on Monday. So, Martin, what happened to all the cell phone companies like Vodacom and NTM and Telcom and all of them? So there were widespread internet outages on almost every internet service provider platform when four cables snapped on the west coast at the same time, seemingly due to seismic activity. Hmm. Now, it's interesting how the solar flare produced seismic activity. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Harp can produce seismic oh. activity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things as well, as including... Aurora now, activity. You know, these conspiracy theorists, they drive you crazy because they never believe anything that is officially put out there in the world. They always speculate that human fingers are somehow mm -hmm. in the pie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we now, can... Fortunately, we're not of that <laughs> ilk. So, <laughs> Martin, I've come to the point where I don't believe anything anymore. I don't anymore. believe anything. The only thing that I believe is, what the, is the Bible. Is that the only thing you believe? Yeah, that the, the, the rest is all based on lies and well, deception. It's uh, uh, even to try and prove it's like uh, scientific theories that are seen as facts yes. these days. Evolution, yeah. for example. I cannot believe that I was an evolutionist. <laughs> I don't want to get into that, no. but I cannot believe that I believed such nonsense. But you know what's the problem? I saw a video, and I put the link in um, the description for this video, when I was going through these things that tell you what this solar flare and all of this will be. And it's <laughs> like in the evolution theory. There's so much scientific jargon and stuff that they throw at you that you think, Wow, this must be true. This must be true. There will be a time of trouble such as never was. That's an axiom, isn't it? Now, a time of trouble means that there will be outages and disharmony and uh, people will be discomforted on every level. Mm. And uh, Satan knows the agenda, so he must 
he must almost frighten people yep. into a particular direction. And that might require an, an ideological shift. Yes. Now remember, the French Revolution was fired by the Jesuits. Yeah. Voltaire was a Jesuit. Yeah. So it was fired by the Jesuits. Why? Because Catholicism has lost its power. Yeah. They want to gain it back. So they bring in an age of reason, mm -hmm. who, which ends in turmoil, and then say we have to go back to the good yeah. old Middle Ages where uh, the church was in control. It's a That's very, where they're going. Exactly. It's a very uh, uh, clever thing. It is an interlude. And they have time. Oh, they, they don't mind. They can do it over a century yeah. or two. Or two. Another article from Unilad, scientists are creating an artificial aurora in the sky to conduct experiments. So Martin, if they're admitting that they're doing that, what was the cause now? A natural phenomena or a experimental phenomena? So just for the people that like to label conspiracy theorists to us, well, then you have to say that to the people that actually do it as well. Okay. So with the huge advancements in science in recent years, experts have been able to discover some pretty wonderful things. Now, it's interesting that Tesla in his days managed to produce these things. So it, it's not all based on modern science, but maybe on hidden science. Yeah, yes. One of these things is being able to create an artificial aurora in the sky to conduct experiments. And let's mm. blame it on the sun. <laughs> the high frequency radio wave transmitter known as the high frequency active auroral research program, HARP, facility in Alaska will create the phenomenon in the sky for four days from Saturday 11th November in order to carry out experiments on the ionosphere. Yeah, and we must just remember, this wasn't now. This was a while back. So this was a while back, and it just shows that they're quite capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether it was a natural phenomena or an artificial phenomena. I well, let me say, I liked what you said earlier. Maybe it was a test run for something, and then they just blame or shift the cause of it to somewhere else. Yes, so nobody is at fault. So what about this HARP research program? Uh, well, this was interesting because the dates of the aurora of the northern and southern part, where the northern and southern lights could be seen, was the same dates that uh, the research campaign for HARP was running. All right, so they're admitting that the HARP program was running, but they're saying it was a solar flare. And other ones say that it was damage to the cables by seismic activity mm. so the solar flare produced the seismic activity or harp produced the seismic activity well let's leave that to the conspiracy theorists to sort out <laughs> so mm. what is what is this research all about here's an article from the university of alaska fairbanks Scientists at HARP use HF radio transmitters to heat small regions of the ionosphere and observe the effects. For additional space research using ground-based observations or experiments on sounding rockets, it can take an extremely long time, days, weeks, years, to get the desired natural overhead conditions. Satellites can amass much larger databases, but it is difficult to coordinate the satellites with the desired phenomena. But isn't it interesting that whenever there's a major seismic activity or a mm -hmm. major earthquake or a tsunami, yeah. that you have these aurora appearances in the sky? Correlation is not necessarily causation. Yes, you're absolutely right. Now, it's interesting that people notice these things. And, of course, if you bounce these, these, uh, these waves mm. off the ionosphere, you can actually focus where mm -hmm. uh, they will penetrate and they can create earthquakes. This is, this is basic knowledge. Now, Tesla did that. He actually caused yes. earthquakes. But of course, they will never, never use it for anything negative. That is conspiracy. <laughs> so with a facility like HARP, 
it is possible to perform an experiment at will to create plasma structures and irregularities, use the ionosphere like an antenna to excite low frequency waves, create weak luminous aurora-like glows, and a variety of other experiments like earthquakes, tsunamis, etc., etc. All right, from experiments with HARP and with uh, natural phenomena, let's move in the direction of where these fear-mongering things can actually lead exactly. to. Exactly. And we're talking about an ideological transition, aren't we? The thing is, all of these mm. tools are used to eventually get to what their plan is. And the ideological shift has to come about because, like you mentioned right at the beginning, we have to go to a religious thing. Yes, it has to because that's what prophecy says will happen. So here is one of the interesting magazines, America. It's, of course, the Jesuit Review. The Jesuits are not my favorite people, as most people will probably have noticed. Pope Francis accepts invitation to the 2024 G7 summit, the first pope ever to attend. Now, why do we throw something like this in? It's to show that no matter where you stand ideologically, whether you're talking about an LGBTQ flag ceremony within Roman Catholic mm -hmm. circles or whether you're talking about a G7 summit, it somehow seems as if the papacy cannot be left out of the equation. Never. He's never excluded. He's on every side. He's always there. Mm -hmm. So whether you move from the left to the right or from the right to the left, the Pope's going to be there. That's the missing link that people don't get together. So in a surprise announcement on April 26, the Italian Prime Minister, and it's interesting she's the one that saw to a, a shift to the right, mm -hmm. back to family and religion and all of these things, uh, Maloney said that Pope Francis had accepted her invitation to participate in the G7 summit in Italy's Apulia region on June 13 to 15. His presence brings prestige to our nation and to the entire group of seven. So uh, the whole world wandered after the beast. I wonder whether she consulted the other six don't think it was necessary. I think they were all on board. <laughs> they probably all rejoice. Yeah. Now this gives prestige to the entire meeting. In addition to Pope Francis, Argentina's president, he also does a flip-flop every now and then, doesn't he? Will be one of the guests who are not members of the G7. Isn't it fascinating that they invite as a guest one who is taking also the ultra-conservative shift to the right? That's what you have to open your eyes. That's why we have to be observers. Because a lot of people will be very glad to follow Maloney and Malay. Because they want to get rid of the globalists on all these enemies of humanity. But then they, you, you must open your eyes and see where they gather and whose hand they're holding. And aren't they super pro-Trump as well? You see. So Francis met him in the Vatican on February the 12th, where he did a great flip-flop from attacking the Pope to embracing him, right? Yeah. He will attend the G7 working session, especially that part dedicated to artificial intelligence. She described AI as one of the great challenges facing humanity today. Now, I don't when they release something like AI to the world, uh, it, is a, it is a known strategy in the world that if you have a technology, you must first have it under the belt and control it mm. before you release it to the world. So AI has probably been used in the military for a long, long mm -hmm. time already. And now they're pretending that it has just popped its head out of nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now they want to introduce rules and govern it. But in the meantime, yes. 
we don't know what's happening behind the scenes and how much control they actually do have. Of, right, of and I read the other day in the news that the new jets, fighter jets that they are producing, should scare the living daylights out of everyone, and they are totally AI controlled. Yeah. So they already have the technology in place. And now they're saying, well, let's see how dangerous this can be. Mm -hmm. It's like introducing the atomic bomb, right? That's it. Now, Martin, if you want to create an ideological shift in thinking, uh, with what generation would you start? With the old fogies or with the, the energy of the youth? Didn't Rehoboam do the same? Yeah, Rehoboam also said, let's listen to the youth and discard the old fogies. And... Uh, the ideological systems of the world, communism or mm. Nazism or whatever they were, they employed the youth. They had the youth brigades. Hitler had the Hitler youth. Mm. And they were the driving force because they were manipulatable. Yeah, yeah. That's so, true. So let's have a look how they can use these things and uh, how they did it in the past and how they can possibly do it today. Mm. Inspired by Soviet Union dictators, Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin, China's communist leader, Mao Zedong, borrowed from the playbook of the Russian Revolution. To fight anti-communist forces, Lenin organized a military branch of his communist party, known as the Red Army. Following suit, Mao branded his army the Red Guards. However, Mao's soldiers were not enlisted from his military. His Red Guards were made up of high school and university students. So he used young people to start cultural revolution, to top down statues, burning old buildings, and demonize all religions, going after all dissident voices, and to turn all the Chinese against each other, family. Look at the Mao's Cultural Revolution to see how many similarities are there. Yesterday I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you... Now we hear a lot of talk today about right-wingers, left-wingers, extremists, and moderates. The political spectrum concept, if it has any meaning at all, is a measurement scale showing all the variations in government. Now, the extremists at the zero end would be those who advocate no government at all, the anarchists. The extremists at the other end would be those who advocate total government. And who are they? Well, the communists, of course. But also the Nazis, the fascists, no matter what they may call themselves, if they advocate the debate is not between conservatives and liberals. It goes back in history long before those words were ever invented. The opposing points of view properly are identified as individualism. The individualist believes that the rights of the individual must not be obliterated by the desires of the collective or the group. The collectivist, on the other hand, believes that the group is more important than the single person within it, and that the individual must be sacrificed if necessary for the greater good of the greater number. The individualists believe that every man has a personal and direct responsibility to provide first for himself, next for his family, and then for those outside his family who may be in need. The collectivist, on the other hand, declares that the individual is not personally responsible for charity, for raising his own children, providing for his aging parents, or even providing for himself, for that matter. This is a group function of the state, of government itself. Modern individualism versus collectivism. Where does the Pope stand on that issue? Oh, on the collectivism side. He despises yes. individualism. Mm. 
Now, if you have to make a choice between the biblical world, world view and a collective world view, then you have to make an individual choice. That's Is that it. not so? That's true. You cannot make a collective choice. No. I cannot hide behind a group religion. No. I have to have a personal decision. We will stand as individuals in the judgment. Yes, by we will God. not hide behind the cloak of anybody. Mm. So if the papacy is against individualism, when we have an ideological shift, will he again be against individualism? For certain. So collectivism must rule. Yeah. In other words, there must be collective laws. That's it. And those laws must be obeyed for the sake of the greater good. Yeah, the common good, as the we always common say. good, which mm. is collectivism. Mm. And if you refuse to bow down, no. and there were only three Hebrew youths who refused to bow down, you could just end up in the fiery furnace. That's it. Is that where we're heading? We saw it, a precursor. And we are definitely heading for that. All right. Now, when you see all these riots in the world today and you look at uh, the ideologies that are involved, and no matter what, what the slogan is, the slogan can be anything. It can be LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. It can be abortion. It can be anti-Semitism. Yes. It can be... Black Lives whatever. Matter. Whatever. Any, any of these ideologies. Any one of them then they are a move towards collectivism. Mm. Now, what if you can rile up an entire religious group, an entire generation of religionists, to find solace in their collectivism and their ideology? Wouldn't that be equally dangerous? Oh, definitely. I, if you remember we showed that person on Christian nationalism, where he said, this is the rules that will be implemented. You can live here, but you'll have to adhere to it. You'll have to adhere to it. All right, so now if you, if you shift from, let's say, a statue-bashing, window-destroying, building-burning, car-burning, violence, mm. to the other collectivism, have you actually solved the problem or actually made it worse without mm. knowing? Of course, you've made it worse. Even though... It looks better. It looks better because that looks good. It, you, want, you don't want anarchy. You don't want the cars burning. But the other portion is just as bad. All right. Uh, so even not, if not worse. It's like we mentioned. When Nebuchadnezzar accepted Daniel's God, he wanted to make a law. That everybody should obey. Exactly. That was as bad as, <laughs> as, as it was before. Yeah. Now, here you have this book, The Catcher in the Rye. And uh, it was also in Mel Gibson's movie on conspiracies. conspiracies. And, of course, it is uh, virtually compulsory reading in Jesuit circles. And also one of the most banned books in the U.S. Yes. So it propagates violence and rebellion in order to achieve an, an objective. Is, is this what the world is experiencing? It's definitely, and most teachers want their pupils to read this book. All right. So now if you are an observer and you see the burning and you see the violence, uh, is it possible that you could jump onto the other bandwagon just for the sake of peace and sanity? For sure. For sure. We, and we see that. So is it very important that you have a very, very distinct guideline like the Word of God? And we have to know what it requires of us. Because some people will get on the bandwagon without even knowing what the Bible really teaches. Okay, so if you want to channel people in a, in a direction and to create an ideological transition, because ideological transitions don't come by accident. No, it is a planned, very organized They're operation. Implanted, right? They're implanted in the mind. Yeah. And you can use whatever your tools are, and you actually create the tools. Yeah. You create front organizations so that you're never the guilty party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Jesuits are very good at that. They have all these front organizations and front people. When they are 
actually the instigators behind the scenes. So here's an article from India Today. Jewish billionaire George Soros linked to pro-Palestine protests in the U.S. Now this man is often uh, portrayed in the media as the great villain. Mm -hmm. Put, uh, sitting behind Everything. The, the funding of um, most of these revolts or anything. Mass migration. He's yeah. funding the people, paying them to come across the border. Now, if the governments are fighting these things and they know that this is the culprit, why is the man not incarcerated <laughs> and put away? Why is he allowed to do whatever he thinks is wonderful, whether it is <laughs> favorable or not? It can only be if... Um, they want him to do they it. Want to, to do, you turn a blind eye towards no, it. Why do they want him to do it? Because they want the outcome. Or the outcome. Yes. And what, is the, what do they use? Youth, most of the time. Yes, let's use the youth. Let's rile them up. <laughs> Promise them a drug or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or even <laughs> pay them, you know. <laughs> yes. I mean, the Jesuits did that in the hippie movement. Yeah. They went around in their, in their Volkswagen combis full of flowers, handing out LSD mm -hmm. and carrying on, and instigating all these things. So, what does he do? Josh Soros, the Jewish left-leaning philanthropist and association funded by him, are reportedly fueling the countrywide pro-Palestinian protests on American campuses. But we should look way past the protests. Way past. I and, agree with you. And ask ourselves, what is the ideology behind it? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, to create a rallying call for the religious world to rally together and to bind together and say, you know, these are the people of the book. We really have to stand with them. This is exactly what's going on. There's method in their madness. They want a certain outcome, and it is definitely to push towards this religious because like you've the always... The Judeo-Christian yes. culture. And say, this is enough. And there's enough yeah. kingdom th theology, whether you're a dispensationalist or not, uh, involved there to strive for it. True, and you can get rid of a lot of uh, law just to bring in unity in religion. Yes, and, and they're using ideologies like the millennium. The Roman Catholics are actually amillennialists. Yeah. They're just saying, when the church rules, that will be the great time. That's what they're waiting for. Yeah. So it has been uh, funded by networks of non-profit organizations, which were in turn funded by Soros, a billionaire who is known as the man who destabilized the Bank of England. He's got so many so-called crimes under his belt, but he's allowed to do just what he wants. And his counterpart is Musk yeah. on the conservative side. They're playing a, Yin -yin. a game. <laughs> thesis, antithesis, synthesis. synthesis. Okay, so what are they basically trained um, to do, whether they receive money for it or not, is immaterial. They are trained to rise up to revolution. That's what they have to do. And a revolution is there to change the mind of someone. To somebody. change the mindset, either for the revolution or against the revolution. That's, uh, so they can even want this revolution, and that's what we believe they're doing, to get people to say, we've had enough of we've this. We've had enough. We want the other side of the story. We've had enough. So we have a Dutch anti-Islam party. It says it's brokered a provisional coalition deal for a hard right government. Now, this is also very fascinating to me because this Geert Wilders, Wilders is his way of probably pronounce it, uh, he is this anti-Islam, you know, we're a Christian nation. We want Christian norms. And uh, when you look at Dawkins, we had him in a previous yeah. program, didn't he say, I'm an atheist, but I want uh, Cultur Christian cultural norms. I'm a cultural Christian, he says, I'm because I want to live in a Christian nation. And I'm nation. sick and tired of these other religions telling us what to do. I want to go back to Christian standards and norms. Who will stand out 
as the numero uno chief Indian when it comes to that. Well, obviously the Pope. Obviously. That's why he's being invited to the G7. Exactly. Exactly. I think he's just as happy to see him there than Melonius. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, who are the nations that are actually moving towards the right in this ideological shift? Mm. Finland, Croatia, hardline right parties are part of European governing coalitions and hard right to populist prime ministers are leading Hungary, Slovakia and Italy. Sweden? Yes. This is all very fascinating. And uh, there are all kinds of conspiracy theories with uh, people trying to assassinate some of these leaders and some of those leaders were anti what uh, some of the World Health Organization mm -hmm. people were saying. So we, we won't discuss this now. Is there a possibility we might discuss it in the future, Martin? Yeah, it's very interesting. This little Vakian prime minister that was attempted to assassinate him because, and like you mentioned, the World uh, Health Organization pandemic treaty that he didn't yes, want anything to do with. He didn't want to take part in that. But that's conspiracy. So is there a shift? Definitely. Now, they're mentioning countries like Hungary, Slovakia, etc. Is the same shift taking place in France? Yes, very much so. Very much so, yeah. right? And uh, is it, did it take place in Sweden? Yes. So is Germany on the cards? Yeah. All right. So this is a very interesting time we're living in. People are saying we're sick and tired of what uh, the age of reason has done to us. We want to get back to something else. Mm. So this Dutch firebrand, Geert Wilders, joins new government as Europe's liberal elites put on notice. So the EU elections are just a few weeks away. And the liberal elites are in absolute panic because a sharp jump to the right is inevitable across Europe. He claimed that this shift is being led by the youth. Mm -hmm. There we go, right? So whether it's for the, the anarchy side or whether it is for, for the conservative side, the youth is going to be involved. We saw these left-wing authoritarians destroy their lives during COVID, consistently suppress their national pride, invite the third world into Europe while they can't find a job, let alone enough money for a house. Is that Generation X? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, it comes Martin. from the 60s. So let's reject that which was in the past. Let's move to something else. Mm. We can either go with the anarchy and tear everything down, or we can turn back to Christian nationalism and stable laws like Dawkins says, let identify as cultural Christians mm -hmm. at least. And that's where the danger is lying. Here's an article from Newsweek. Republicans voting for bill that could make the Bible illegal outrageous MAGA. So the MAGA conservatives voiced outrage at congressional Republicans voting for Anti-Semitism Awareness Act over concerns it would make the Bible illegal. Is faith coming into the fray? The whole time. It's not separated anymore anyway. I mean, the Pope is going to the G7. Yes. <laughs> so some conservatives are taking issue with the bill over the definition of anti-Semitism, including claim of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel. They have made a coalition in their mind with the Jewish system. Dispensationalism runs through their mind. Mm. They don't realize that dispensationalism comes from the Jesuits. It's another tool. It's a tool. It's a lie. It's <laughs> It's based on a false interpretation of who the Israel of God is. Your house has been left to you. Desolate. Desolate. You have to be in Christ to be Abraham's seed yeah. and heirs according to the promise. So they're worried that they would make the Bible illegal, while the definition in the bill does classify the idea that Jewish people were involved in killing Jesus as anti-Semitic, it does not make the Bible illegal. 
people of the book. Let's go back to the Bible. Is there an ideological shift? Oh, definitely. But I think these people have to go and uh, go back a little bit because the Pope, if I'm not mistaken, has cleared the Jews of any guilt. Yes, he exonerated them from, <laughs> from their guilt. They were most elated. It was the Romans that killed him. But who handed him over to the Romans? The Jews. Now, Martin, if you can portray society as it is today in its most ridiculous light, mm. could that be an incentive to create an ideological shift to something that is more rational? Even for people that are not religious, I'm sure. Even for people that are not religious, yeah. right? Like the Dawkinses of the world. For sure. No, we, we can't live with this. This <laughs> is totally ridiculous. Yeah. So we're going to show something about furries. Explain <laughs> to them what furries are. <laughs> furries are people that identify as animals. Oh, and they find them in the schools, right? Yes, especially in schools. I mean, we've for reference to where they put litter boxes, cat litter boxes in schools for those that identify as cats. Well, now there's been some up rising about children that cannot handle this anymore. Yeah, they can't but, handle it anymore. Yeah. No, that's really ridiculous. You know, Martin, when, with my rebellious nature, I would <laughs> use those boxes all the time just <laughs> to make the teachers clean them up. <laughs> but let's, let's see how, how this is panning out. You know about the pro-Hamas protests at Ivy League schools, but how about a furry protest? A new trend has emerged where some children believe they are animals known as furries. They purchase furry animal ears, paws, tails, and even collars online and wear them to school. This may seem harmless, but the truth is these students are causing disruptions in their school studies. Recently, some students at Mount Nebo Middle School in Payson, Utah, walked out of class stating they had had enough. The furries were making it difficult for them to walk down the school hallways without being molested. They either bite us, they scratch us, they work on us, they, 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 they spray the on us, and then they spray the perfume, and they, 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 they run on all yeah. fours and pounce on people. Actually, it's not something that's been occurring. In fact, a lot of the information that's been put out there is completely incorrect and inaccurate. However, the students say it is happening, and some parents encourage their kids to act like animals because they believe it's healthy for them to role play and use their imagination. Folks, this is beyond imagination. This is crazy. And we wonder why test scores have declined and this country faces a shortage of about 55,000 full-time teachers. It's time for schools that allow this to happen to crack down against the furries. Humans are not animals. But what do we expect to happen when adults tell children to be whatever gender they feel like being on a given day? And now, whatever animal they want to be. See the progression here? Let's remember that God made us in His image, male and female He made us, for His purposes. We are a reflection of a divine Creator, not the animals that He gave us the authority to rule over. It's time to get back to reading, writing, and arithmetic, not eating kibbles and using litter boxes. Sorry, they may be cute and sometimes fun for costume parties, but furries have no place in American classrooms. Martin, what is this? Is this a... It's just, not, an, just another tool that they're using to get... An this, ideological uh, shift. That's it. This has become from the sublime to the ridiculous. Let's get back to... Some norms. Some norms and sensibilities, right? Mm. So let's get an ideological shift. Now, uh, they can buy these things online. So are the mega companies oh. playing their role? Oh, for sure. Are they just in it to make a buck or is it to move a trend along in order to get another trend? I think it's both. I think they are helping to move the trend along because the top of the top is really knows what's going on. But the rest is just, uh, yeah, we're doing it for profit. So the Hegelian dialectic mm. and the industry and the media, they're all involved. Definitely. Who controls them? Who said this? We're not saying this. The Bible predicted it. Correct. So, Martin, would it be useful if in this climate of, of ridiculousness, we suddenly see a massive movement, an ideological shift towards religion, 
And people taking their stand, and particularly uh, media people and stars taking a stand for religious issues. It will, it's bound to happen because, like you mentioned, not everybody wants to be part of the ridiculous. They're going to say, we, we have to get back some norms. Okay, and so, they will choose a religion and then uh, everybody will be uh, surprised and maybe follow suit. True. All right, so here's the National Catholic Reporter. I'm sure they're related because Candace Owen converts to Catholicism. So the Friar Brand conservative commentator, Candace Owen, has announced her conversion to Catholicism, a long expected move for the controversial 34 year old black ideologue. So she announced the news on social media on Monday afternoon, April 22nd, describing it as a decision to go home. Now, you know, this go home sounds like Vatican II. Mm. The separated children, please come home. Is Catholicism playing a major role here? Oh, you see, Catholicism has also mastered brainwashing yes. and propaganda. So a lot of these people probably, like you mentioned, or we've mentioned numerous times, it's not the people, but it's the, the system. system. So it looks like the wonderful system to go to if you don't know any better. Imagine how, how easy it is to brainwash children, for example, <laughs> to think that they're cats or whatever. There is, of course, so much more that went into this decision and that I plan to share in the future. But for now, praise be to God for his gentle but relentless guiding of my heart towards truth, long identified as reformed evangelical Protestant. So Martin, she was a long identified reformed evangelical Protestant, but she's now gone home to truth. And that truth denies mm -hmm. the atonement. That truth has changed the commandments of God. And that truth has replaced Calvary with a mass. Yeah. And the, and the intercessor for the saints and Mary. Yeah. Now, Martin, this is horrendous, but the world is saying nothing because they've been brainwashed into saying nothing. Exactly. They don't know any better. They don't know any better. But... We have to do some about truth again. We have to do some evangelism. Shall we hear what she has to say? For well, sure. There is a reason why Karl Marx, who you could argue one of the most successful philosophers ever, he is the most successful philosopher. He's in terms of having his ideas implemented in society. Why he wrote so excitedly against the concept of family, not just the Communist Manifesto, but all of his other works too. It, was, it, be, it became a tenet of the government. If the government wishes to grow and supersede individuals and supersede families, we need to make the nuclear family look bad because they knew that what it would produce if you don't aspire to family, if you don't aspire to children, is a fundamentally selfish individual and an individual that is willing to get into this almost intimate relationship with the government. They don't believe in God. They're atheists. They believe in more governance as a solution to everything. Everything is temporal. Everything is instantaneous and in the moment. And so it's interesting that as Russell Brand moves away from his socialist and communist radical leaning past and moves toward family, he is now also talking about faith. It is our job to die so that as Christ died on the cross, he might be reborn in us. It's not just me that's experiencing a spiritual awakening across the world. There appears to be a return to religion. And obviously, if you were asking me for my personal recommendation, I could only use my personal experience as the basis for a personal recommendation. But across the world, this seems to me like a time where a set of values not derived from the materialist culture are becoming increasingly relevant. When you look at that ghoulish gala that was the White House press correspondence dinner, it's pretty obvious that we are a rudderless society, damned and doomed. And beautiful. 
I know a lot of people are sort of cynical about the increasing interest in Christianity and the return to God, but to me it's obvious as meaning deteriorates in the modern world, as our value systems and institutions crumble, all of us become increasingly aware that there is this eerily familiar awakening and beckoning figure that we've all known all of our lives within us and around us. And for me, it's very exciting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the mainstream media who absolutely adored him when he was deep in his addictions hates him. Really think about that. And I will tell you, I am a big believer that Hollywood was created by the CIA. I believe that. I firmly believe that. You can say that's a conspiracy theory. When I think about all the societal ills, when I think about how they artificially place people at the top of Hollywood who are preaching toxic principles, routinely anti-family principles, now definitively satanic principles, it just should make you pause and wonder, why is that? Why is that? Why do they reject someone like Russell Brand when he's coming up and recognizing that family and faith is turning him into a good person and yet adore individuals as they're deep in their addictions? I'm just going to leave you guys with that thought. All right. So how important is the family structure to her? Very important. Now, the heart of Catholicism. Exactly. Isn't that the family? It's 100%. And isn't it uh, free time for the family? Yes. And isn't Sunday worship part of that? Yes, the whole Sunday movement is geared towards family. Wasn't that part of Rerum Novarum already? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. That was to dictate the whole of the economic world's uh, activities. Well, what about Laudato Si? That's it. But you see how clever Satan is. And so the ends justify oh. the means. What is Hollywood other than Jesuit theater? Yeah. So it was to create a scenario that would be despised in the end so that you can get to where you really want to get the pendulum to swing. Is it swinging? They are succeeding in what they've put in plan years ago already. Now, the plan is so brilliant that there must be a super strategist behind it. And that strategist is Satan. Yeah. He inspires people to do certain things. And she admits that Satan is behind it. But she doesn't realize that he might be behind the movement that is taking place now as well. That's the most dangerous part. You know, it, it is so scary to think because I know of a lot of people that's caught up in this. You get caught up in it because it seems this is the right thing to be happening. This it is. is right. It's wonderful that she's converted. converted. But now you have to give her the total truth because you have to get out of this you Babylon have to get system. Out of the system. So what... What is interesting, it doesn't matter who the media mogul is or the mega star or what role he plays. Here you have Bear Grylls help baptize Russell Brand in the River Thames. And how did this happen? Now, Martin, uh, tell us a little bit about Bear Grylls. What well, is Bear Grylls may, is famous for... E does all these um, survival stunts that we goes into <clears throat> they drop him in a remote place and then he shows some survival skills that's he, not he, very palatable he, he eats anything yeah. that creeps and crawls and yeah shoves it into his mouth and everybody is horrified but he is a he is a well-known figure and people on the millions watch his yeah. antics right and i am if i'm not mistaken last year he took russell brand on a on an excursion, and they talked a lot about faith. They talked about faith. So now they are helping each other to be baptized. Uh, it's sending a message. Nick Hilton looks at how Bear Grylls and Russell Brand were both linked to the same evangelical immersion program, came to end up in the Thames together. It's sending a message. That's it. And even though it can be a really good, heartfelt conversion, it's unfortunately in this stage still part of their plan. It's still part of the plan and it's leading towards a particular ideological shift. I think if Satan was sitting back, he doesn't matter if there's some collateral damage in his um, eyes. Like say some of these truly convert, it doesn't matter to him. 
because he's as long as he gets the overall picture. Yeah. Now, in in here in the Catholic Herald, it says that Russell Brand was baptized while making oblique Catholic references. So, Russell Brand is more on the evangelical side, and here he is making Catholic references. And of course, he was previously a Buddhist. So who was previously a Buddhist, announced that he had taken up praying the rosary. Later, he teamed up with the Catholic prayer app Hallo and revealed he had been watching videos of popular YouTube personality, U.S. Catholic priest Father Mike Schmitz. It's also known that Bran has attended an Alpha course, which educates the inquiring on fundamentals of Christian belief and is run by the Church of England and has attended a Catholic church. So is this a very ecumenical approach? Yeah. Now, uh, praying the rosary, taking pass in the Alpha course. We've discussed all of these in great detail in previous mm. lectures and we've shown that they are programs which are not exactly as the Bible would say no. things should be run, right? It's, unfortunately, it's part of the brainwashing. So here we see an ideological transition. Yeah. People are suddenly becoming religious. Yeah. And the Catholic Church is always in the fray. It's always in, in there. All right. Another point that's quite interesting, Martin, is that uh, Candace Owen has lined, aligned herself with the conservative Catholics. And uh, like Cardinal Schneider, for example, mm. Bishop Schneider. Now, this is very interesting because they're quite vocal against Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. So they're leaning towards the conservative side. But if you remember, we've mentioned Malay, Xavier Malay of Argentina. He was also very against the Pope on national television. Yes. And where did that end up? Yeah, it ended up with him embracing and gesticulating. It's not just a celebrity here or there, right? This seems to be a real ideological transition. Yeah. So let's have a look at some of the, the people involved and uh, what impact they have. Why do you think it is that it seems like more big, bigger name folks are becoming Christian? Or to some degree mm. or another, like Candace Owens and, oh, is that and Rod, Rod Schneider, your bride. Yeah, Ian Hersey Lee, yeah. Neil Ferguson, Russell yeah. Brand, Joe Rogan, Douglas Joe Murray. Rogan, we do a Joe Rogan. Yeah, well, Joe's Joe's already <laughs> oh, the, he's ha he's got he's a foot in the camp. He's a lot less um, disparaging of Christianity than he yeah, once was, which, which we all really yeah, appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah, you, yeah. Well, Joe. Joe. Joe figured it out. Joe figured it out. Yeah. yeah. Dawkins called himself a cultural Christian like two weeks ago. Well, why? Well, how about because he's terrified of the Islamic fundamentalists? Yes. How about that? Yes. So afraid that he won't speak against them in public. Right, well, there's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the Christians had something right? As time rolls on, people are going to understand the need to have some sort of divine structure to things, some sort of belief in the sanctity of love and of truth. And a lot of that comes from religion. A lot of people's moral compass and the guidelines that they've used to follow, to live a just and righteous life, this come from religion. And unfortunately, a lot of very intelligent people, they dismiss all the positive aspects of religion because they think that the stories are mere superstitious fairy tales that, you know, they they have no place in this modern world and, you know, we're inherently good and your ethics are based on your old moral compass and we all have one and that's not necessarily true. We need to, we need Jesus. <laughs> I think for real. Like, if he came back now, it'd be great. Like, Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back. Right now? Now's a good time. Yeah, pretty soon, yeah. Now's a good time. Well, there's a lot of people that think that that might be coming. Well, it might be. Mark of the beast. If there is the Christianity part and, and Jesus wants to come back and save everything. It'd be good right around now. Yeah. Like, don't wait till the election. I agree with the principles that Jesus advocated. Um, and th that the you know there's some some there's great wisdom in what in, in the teach, teachings of, of Jesus uh, and I agree with those teachings 
Um, and things like tone the other cheek are, are very important because as opposed to an eye for an eye. Um, an eye for an eye leads everyone blind. So forgiveness, you know, is important and um, treating people as you would wish to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Very important. I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. But I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. So Martin, is there an ideological transition taking place? I think it's a very, very clear. It, it, two years ago, you didn't see any of this. No. So it's been very rapid. Very rapid. So the last events will be? Rapid ones. Rapid ones. Now Martin, when you see this shift, should you rejoice or should you become very careful and introspective? Very careful in perspective and really find out what does God require from you. How important is it that the great controversy gets out there to people? Well, I believe that it's probably, except for the Bible, one of the most important books that must be spread around the world now. Absolutely, because we are right there. We are seeing the foundations being laid for what the scripture says is going to happen. Yeah. And people need to be aware of it. And we are not here to denigrate these people. We're not here to say that their experiences are not genuine. But we do have an obligation to warn them as to where it's heading. Yes. America needs Jesus. America doesn't need it to turn over a new leaf. America needs a new life. And, and new life is only given on God's terms as the sheer grace of God. It's got, that's how it's got to be. And so we, what we need is preachers, Christian preachers, who will stop being ashamed of the name of Jesus and preach the gospel and preach the gospel as though it's supposed to spread out um, into the streets after the service. So too many churches are Jesus boxes where, <laughs> where you, you go in, you have your meeting with, the, with Jesus in your box, and then you go out and live pretty much like everybody else. That's right. You try to keep your nose a little bit cleaner than the average guy, but you, you still fit right in. But I believe he does. So I believe that if our nation were destroyed for our arrogance and conceit by fireballs from heaven, you know, if, if God were to do that, uh, it would be not unjust. It would be a just judgment. We, we have been arrogant in the extreme. And I would say the central arrogance, there's, there's fruits of this arrogance downstream, the 60 million children who were aborted, the, the various things that we do, um, the going around the world, preaching at people, how to get their life together, threatening them, killing them when we don't know how to live our lives, <coughs> all of that. That's the fruit of the central sin. The central sin is secularism. The, secu the secularism is that we can, we can live decent, orderly lives without Christ. We don't need God in order, we don't need God in order to live um, uh, placidly the way we did in the Eisenhower years with black and white sitcoms where Father Knows Best and, you know, we, we, can, we can do that. And I'd say, yeah, okay, how's it going? We, the grand secular experiment is now at a point where they don't know what a girl is. That's because secularism is not a biologist, right? They, they can't tell you what a girl is. They can't tell you what a human being is. And if, you, if they can't tell you what a human being is, how can they tell you what human rights are? Well, they, they can't. And, they, and more, more than that, they don't want to because, because they want to move us around as though we are just uh, pieces on the board that they, you know, to, to, to gratify their whims and their theories. So secularism is the idea that we can establish agnosticism or atheism as the official faith of the country and govern ourselves decently without reference to God. That is radically false. We can't do it. Has we, it ever been achieved anywhere in no. history that you're aware of? No. Well, Martin, that just hit the nail on the head. 
The enemy, the sin, is secularism. Yeah. Now, isn't that king of the south? Exactly. Pushing against the king of the north, which right. is religion. But isn't he sitting at the same table and planning this with the king of the north? And that's what we've been saying the whole time. So the Jesuits create mm. the one atmosphere in order to bring about the other atmosphere. It's called Hegelian dialectic, right? And it's working very good. It's working. Well, obviously practiced it in, in communism. They've practiced it in Nazism. They're very good at it. And they are the enemies of God and man. Yeah. And fortunately, they will not much longer be tolerated on this earth. When, when Jesus returns, when that stone strikes the statue, the entire statue, the entire mm -hmm. image of Daniel 2 is ground to powder. Mm. That means the entire political system that has been erected on this earth is ground to powder and then it is blown away. Not a vestige of mm. it will remain. And if you do not make the right decision now, then you will be blown away with that dust. That's it. Never to exist again. And if very you, serious. If you just say, where are we in the stream of that statue? Yes. It's right through up until the point you always say in the toenails. Yes, it's in the toenails. And the violence that we see in the world. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, the confrontation, this is a typical north-south ideological confrontation. And the king of the north is coming against the secularism with everything that he has. Yeah. We're seeing it right here. No, for sure. And he's going to overrun it. And he's going to try and plant his tent in God's environment. And a lot of people are going to say, this is good. Because it looks good if you're not grounded in what the real It only looks is. good relative to what went before. Exactly. Now, but some of these celebrities that we're mentioning, like Beck, for example, they are not unaware of the book that we spoke about, yeah, The Great, Great controversy. controversy. So that information is out there. But my problem is, Martin, that the noise mm. that is created might just drown that voice of reason that is there amongst them. There's so much noise yeah, yeah. Uh, that if we do not focus a bright beam on that information, it will be lost. That's it. So even if you have, and that's a very good point, even if you have the great controversy on your shelf. Doesn't help you. Nothing. Even if you've read it and you put it back on the shelf, still. Doesn't help you. So... A whimper won't cut it. No. It has to be a loud cry. Yeah. This is the great controversy by E.G. White. It is about the battle between good and evil. We are seeing that play out more and more in the world around us every day. This book, next to the Bible, to me, is probably the greatest book I've ever read. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it tells about the past and the present and the future. When we turn away from God, from his true principles of the Bible, we all get ourselves in trouble. And I believe this nation today is in great trouble. We need to get back to biblical principles that are practical in our everyday lives. This great controversy will change people's lives. Even the great Paul Harvey, when he was alive, told me personally, this is one of the greatest books that he had ever read. It's an amazing book. And you know, Glenn was just telling me this is the one that people sent to him more than anything. I, I, and get, books, I get books sent to me all the time. People right. send me books. That book is sent to me more than any other book. I, I, I bet I have, I bet I have received in the last five years, 500 copies of that book. Easy. So Martin, the information is there. And this is 10 years old, the video. Yes. All right. So the information is there. Yeah. But the bright beam is not focused on it because people are running with a noise. Yes. What is our task? Our task is to pinpoint them to the truth. Uh, okay. So this is the entire focus of the ministry. I mean. To bring this truth to the world. So this discussion has transcended the age of reason. Yes. You can see that the age of reason, even Dawkins, okay, sure, but it's moving 
into another direction. Yes, wasn't his evolutionary theory supposedly based on reason? Yeah. When there was no reason <laughs> to base it on in the first place. But let's listen how these, these media people are actually speaking. Let's just hear what they have to say. So you bring up you bring up God. So let's go to an even bigger picture. When I said, when does it start? I, I think, you know, when you know, a third of the angels were lost um, and, uh, you know, Satan is cast out. That whole argument was about individual choice. You are going to choose. You are going to. Yes, you're going to suffer and you're going to, you know, whatever. But you will have freedom of choice. Satan said, no, 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 no. You don't want them all to suffer. You don't want all of that. How, what kind of person are you? I thought you were a good guy. Now you're making everybody suffer and you're saying some of us are going to be lost. I'll tell them what to do. I think what we're experiencing now is the same battle that is found in the falling of a third of the angels. And it's the same I think it's the same argument as well. How do you get a third of the angels who are seeing God all the time, praising him, standing there? They know who he is. How do you get them to turn on him? You have to make him into a monster through compassion. You have to say, he wants some of you lost. He's not going to save everybody. He wants you to suffer. I'm telling you there's a way to not suffer. What do you think of that theory? You're absolutely correct. And and one of the things that you see, and this has been going on for hundreds of years, is this movement to try to make that exact argument, right? God is oppressive. God's got all these mm -hmm. rules for your life. You know, how, how mean of him to <laughs> say that you shall not and you, you must do this. Uh, you know, why not have total freedom? And, and you see, actually, a lot of self-proclaimed Satanists make these arguments. Mm -hmm. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, right? We don't need to obey those silly moral codes. Uh, you know, who, who does God think he is to impose those things? <laughs> Oh. On us. And, and for a long time, those kind of base instincts, especially in the Western world, were held in check because the rest of society said, no, wait, these are important. <laughs> these are these are good right. things. But now we see that breaking down after a period of multiple generations of constant attack, uh, indoctrination of multiple generations of children. And so we're now moving into a, a new phase of the battle. But I agree with you. This is all the same struggle between good and evil that's been going on from the dawn of humanity. And um, it's it's maybe a new phase in that battle, but ultimately the core of the battle is still the same. And what stands out in that discussion is these moral laws. Mm. Uh, we don't need them. That's what society thought, but look where, where it's gotten us, yeah. right? In the past, when those norms were adhered to, society was relatively orderly. Yeah. Now we have all of this chaos. Is this an invitation to bring those moral laws back? Definitely. But there's a but there's a kicker. <laughs> there's a catch. There's a catch because there's always a catch yeah. when Satan is involved. Which moral law will they bring back? The Catholic one. The Catholic version. Does that have the fourth commandment in it? Yes. No, it doesn't. Mark Ach, sorry, it has Mark. a third <laughs> commandment because they chucked the second one out. Of course, yes. And they've changed the day. Yeah. What about the second commandment? That's gone. Gone. Then split the 10th commandment into two. Yes. So Martin, here's an interesting point. They're going to run with the Catholic version. Of course. And the problem is the mark of the beast. Yes. They will not grasp it completely because it's linked to the fourth commandment. So if I could make an appeal to Glenn Beck... If you have 500 copies mm -hmm. of the great controversy, please just read one. Yeah. Just one. So by the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abbess to clasp the hands of spiritualism, and when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, 
then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. So is the end near, Martin? I believe so. I believe so, definitely. As the approach of the Roman armies was assigned to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy be assigned to us that the limit of God's forbearance is reached, that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full, and that the angel of mercy is about to take a flight never to return. The people of God will then be plunged into those scenes of affliction and distress which prophets have described as the time of Jacob's trouble. Now the sad part is that these people sincerely want to put this record straight. Mm. But they've been lied to. <sighs> and they fall into a trap. Whose job is to warn against the trap? The church. The remnant church. Now if the remnant church doesn't do that, aren't they failing in their commission from God? Of course. Now what if some people within the ranks say that if you actually do that, you're a terrorist? No, yeah, no, then I'm then saying... Then let there be even war. That's it. Unfortunately, that is not what we are for. This church is not an ecumenical gathering church. No. The judge of all the earth is soon to arise and vindicate his insulted authority. The mark of deliverance will be set upon the men who keep God's commandments, who revere his law and who refuse the mark of the beast or his image. God has revealed what is to take place in the last days, that his people may be prepared to stand against the tempest of opposition and wrath. Those who have been warned of the events before them are not to sit calm, expectation of the coming storm, comforting themselves that the Lord will shelter his faithful ones in the day of trouble. We are to be as men waiting for the Lord, not in idle expectancy, but in earnest work. With unwavering faith, it is no time now to allow our minds to be engrossed with things of minor importance. While men are sleeping, Satan is actively arranging matters so that the Lord's people may not have mercy or justice. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. This is exactly what we are seeing. And we, we show it. You can see this. And we cannot be quiet. The leaders are concealing the true issue, and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. They don't see it. No. Unfortunately, like I said, there's a lot of people that are probably honest. and Yes. But you have to wake up. Its professions are mild and apparently Christian. But when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of the dragon. It is our duty to do all in our power to avert the threatened danger. We should endeavor to disarm prejudice by placing ourselves in a proper light before the people, we should bring before them the real question at issue, thus interposing the most effectual protest against measures to restrict religion, liberty of conscience. We should search the scriptures and be able to give the reason for our faith, says the prophet. The wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Mm. Well, Martin, the Bible says that the wise will turn many towards righteousness. Mm. That's so let's preach righteousness. I mean. And righteousness means right doing. Yeah. And righteous doing means being in conformity with the law of God and not with the law of man. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the world is experiencing an ideological transition. And precisely what the Bible predicted is happening. And yet the world is fast asleep, not knowing about the trap that has been set for them. And there are a few that understand the issue. Help them to speak with a loud voice. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.